Peace be with you. Friends, our first reading for this uh, weekend is taken from the second book of Kings. It's one of my favorite readings in the Old Testament. We have just a tiny passage from it, uh, verses 14 through 17 of chapter 5, but read all of chapter 5 of Second Kings. It's the story of Naaman the leper and his famous cure. Uh, it's really worth a careful reading. And what I want to do is, is walk through this with you and draw out some really perennial spiritual lessons. Here's how chapter 5 of 2 Kings opens. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. So, Naaman is a Big dealer. He's a very prominent figure. He's a military commander. And I don't know why that's the case, but from the ancient world till today, we have great respect for military commanders. We respect their, their courage, their intelligence, their um, bravery, etc. So here's Naaman. He's a big dealer. Very uh, successful military commander. Highly esteemed and respected. But now listen. But valiant as he was... The man was a leper. Now, that's a biblical theme of some importance, isn't it? Leprosy. You see it in the Old Testament and the New. What they meant by that term is a little bit vague, but he had some serious skin disease, some seriously compromising illness. Even the greatest people suffer from some debility. It might be physical. It might be like this, a physical problem. It might be a psychological weakness. It might be a type of anxiety. It might be a fear of failure. It might be something that just gnaws at you, you can't get control of. I've told this story before, I think, of um, Sir Laurence Olivier, the greatest actor of the 20th century at the height of his career, suffered from debilitating stage fright. People would say the great Olivier, the greatest actor in the world, but yet he had the actor's worst enemy, stage fright. Think of Abraham Lincoln's wrestling with uh, depression. Think of FDR's long struggle with polio. All of us The greatest suffer from some form of leprosy. Now, listen how the story goes on. Now, the Aramaeans had captured from the land of Israel in a raid a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. So, here's someone, in the ancient world anyway, who was at the lowest possible place on the social scale. A young girl who'd been captured as a slave. But she speaks, if only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So she gives the advice. I know how to solve this problem. He needs to go to the land of Israel. He needs to talk to one of the prophets there and they will cure him. And so Naaman followed the advice of this little slave girl. Very important spiritual lesson now to all of us who suffer from some form of leprosy. All of us have some problem, public or private, hidden or otherwise. Sometimes we have to have the humility to take advice, even from the lowest and least significant people. Sometimes the route to cure us of these debilities is humility. So Naaman goes to the king with his plan. The king says, I'll send along a letter to the king of Israel asking for his help. And so Naaman sets out along with that letter and a large retinue and they come into Israel. But when he read the letter, the king of Israel 
tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he's only looking for a quarrel with me. Well, it's you know pretty real politique right there. It's hard-headed, realistic politics. Here's a king of Israel who sees this military commander coming into his country with a large retinue, accompanied by this puzzling letter. Oh, he's come here to be cured of his leprosy. Yeah, sure he has. You can imagine the advisors of the king of Israel saying, be very wary of this man. He's coming, undoubtedly, to spy out the land. He's coming with this large retinue so he can reconnoiter the land of Israel, perhaps in preparation for an invasion. So the reaction of the king of Israel is understandable here. Here's a spiritual lesson. First one is, we've all got leprosy. Second one is, you've got to have the humility sometimes to accept advice, even from the lowest places. You have to have humility if you, can, if you want to deal with the stability. Third spiritual lesson, when you're walking the path of healing, expect opposition. We live in a finite, conflictual, sinful world, don't we? In a perfect world, you know, as we're seeking the ways of the Lord, people would support us. We don't live in a perfect world. We live in a sinful world, a fallen world. Therefore, we should expect opposition, especially when we're walking the path of humility. Don't be surprised when the powers of the world array themselves against you as you're seeking to be cured. Naaman endured. He perdured despite the opposition of the king of Israel. So he came with his horses, we hear, in chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Now, Elisha is the prophet in question, the prophet to which the young girl had sent him. Elisha says, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. Okay, he's come this long way. He's withstood opposition. He comes to the prophet and he hears this command. Go wash in the river Jordan. But listen now. But Naaman went away angry saying, I thought he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord God and move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and the Parfar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not have washed in them and be cleansed? And with this, he left in anger. It's a very interesting moment, isn't it? He's come a long way, admitted his problem, in humility accepted uh, advice. He's withstood the opposition of the king of Israel. He's actually come to the prophet. And now the prophet gives instruction. And he backs down. He backs away. Because it was not what he was expecting. I thought he'd come out and wave his hand over my <laughs> leprosy, and, and, I, and that's what I was expecting. Bathe in a river seven times? Heck, I could have jumped in a river back home. Why did I come all the way here? You see, what's happening is the resistance to healing. You saw it with the resistance of the king of Israel, but now in himself, the resistance to healing. Think of the Israelites who have escaped from slavery in Egypt, but then once they face opposition, they want to go back. Let's go back to the flesh pots of Egypt. At least we had enough to eat in in Egypt. They long for slavery. Things weren't working out the way they expected. Same problem here. Things weren't going just the way that Naaman expected. And so he turns in anger. He turns away from this. Watch this now in yourself. All of us now suffer from leprosy. We're all seeking the path of healing. Sometimes the recommendation given to us by the Lord, by his church, by the great tradition, by our spiritual directors and so on, our confessors, is not what we're expecting. You know, we have enough humility to say we got a problem and we're seeking help, but then when the solution comes, we don't like it. But listen now as the story goes on. 
But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, wouldn't you have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you have do what he says. So, Naaman went down and plunged in the Jordan seven times, following the word of the man of God. And what happens? Listen. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He finally had the humility, the docility, to do as the prophet had told him. And he found cleansing from this disease. What will cure our leprosy, our spiritual leprosy, our spiritual problems and illnesses? What will solve it? Well, finally, following the word of the man of God, as we hear, that means the words of the prophets, yes, indeed, but ultimately the word of the word made flesh. Think of Mary in the story of the what if he's a Cana. Do whatever he tells you. When people balked at Jesus' uh, plans, do whatever he tells you. Even if it seems strange to you, surprising, why would I do that? Do whatever he tells you. Follow the command of the man of God, and you'll find cleansing. Then this, now, as the story goes on. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. He comes to Elijah, Elisha, rather. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. What's the conclusion of this process? We realize our struggle, whatever it is, our form of leprosy. We have the humility to accept advice, even from the lowest place. We have confronted opposition both from without and from within. We finally follow the word of the man of God. And now what? We come finally to worship. Finally, the problem is always bad worship. We worship in the wrong way, and from that comes all these forms of spiritual dysfunction. So at the end, Naaman can say, I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. And then, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except to the Lord. See, what he wants here is, earth from Israel to bring back to his native country so that he can engage there in right praise. Everybody, that's the conclusion of any journey of healing. Healing from physical trouble, spiritual trouble, psychological trouble. The goal, having passed through humility, opposition, both outside and in, The goal is the right praise of the living God. Read this story, chapter 5 of 2 Kings, the story of the cure of Naaman the leper. I think it's a beautiful icon of the process of healing that we all have to go through. And God bless you.